what always excites me is like the edge of like figuring out the next the next answer, the next question. Like right now, it's like just really getting to see how our body, the extent of who we are, is the extent of our senses, which means our vision, because we can see a lot further than we can hear. We see the stars. If we can see it, we can imagine it, we can visualize it, we can connect to it visually, like the, like the, the Greeks believed, and like most grade school children believe, and like somewhere around 30% of even college students believe, vision is an outward projection. As vision scientists, when we work with people to improve their vision, we, we have to, we, that's what we're working with, we have to believe that. It's not like, oh, it's just a camera and it's taking a picture and there's a picture here and you just have to make sure the you know, shutter's working. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a consciousness, a projection of consciousness. As, as my, my, my dad's predecessor, uh, A.M. Skeffington, founder of Optometric Extension Program Foundation that, that trained thousands and thousands of optometrists in behavioral optometry and developmental optometry, one of his famous sayings that he'd go around the country teaching the optometrists that they'd go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they would make them think, was vision is motor. Vision is motor. Oh, wait, vision is, vision is sensory. Vision is motor? Vision is motor. You know, sight is sensory, but vision is motor. We can, we can have sight, but, but not have any vision the vision is our response, our action in the world, whether it's just at a level of thought, thought is action. You know, when we think, when we think a thought, let's say I think, I imagine hitting a tennis ball with a racket. If you have electromyographs attached to my muscles, you can read exactly when I'm thinking that because the thought is a subliminal action. We're actually doing, and, and or the studies with basketball where practice free throws, and, Okay, and you get better with practice, right? Let's divide the group in two. Half of you practice free throws at the court, and the other half imagine you're practicing free throws. They both improve just as much. <laughs> it's the, the real action is the rehearsal of, of the imagery. And now it's dependent, can we see what, you know, how, how quickly, how easily, how effortlessly can we see it? Can we see it? And then if we can see it, we don't have to effort to tell our muscles, oh, move the right arm a degree left, you know. It's, it's automatic. It happens because we see it, we can move through that space efficiently and interact with it. If, if, if a, a child has an eye that tends to, tur eyes that tend to turn inward, and you know, not overtly, you don't see it, but, but the muscles that turn the eye in are, are a little t tighter, which means really usually all the muscles are tighter because those are the thickest ones, so they're overpowering the rest because all the muscles are tight, which means he's acidic, he's toxic, he's in phase four maybe, needs, to, needs cleansing, maybe he's got allergies or, or toxicity of some kind. And, and so muscles are tight. So now when he looks at that baseball coming at him, the eye muscles are triangulating that as if it's closer than where it really is they're moving slowly because they're like, you know, trying to run underwater, they're, they're all jammed up. And so by the time he figures out where that ball looks like it is, where, when his vision projects where the ball is, when he sees it, he's seeing it closer than where it actually is. So he swings at the ball as he sees it, but it's really not there yet. So there's this mismatch in space-time when the body gets out of sync. The visual system is the most finely tuned system in the, in the entire body as far as having to coordinate in space and time and coordinate between the autonomic nervous system and the voluntary nervous system. Uh, so to look at that moving target, there's, there's focus happening that's, that's parasympathetically regulated. And if sympathetic system is all stressed and fight or flight, then that's going to suppress that ability to focus. And the two eyes have to aim at the same point in space that's a moving target. And they have to do that within like a couple minutes of arc of each other, like way finer than a degree. It's so much finer than any other movements that we have to coordinate. And yet it's coordinating between this eye and this eye where there's no direct connection between the two, two entirely separate systems other than coordination through the, the brain. <laughs>